And that's a point that a friend of mine who's a lawyer, who's a woman, because there's, there's a famous lawyer in America now who's a trans lawyer and has the ridiculous huge boobs, the, everything. Oh, yes, I've seen yeah. uh, Yes, I've seen that um, that individual, yes. Well, she um, said, what, what woman would get away with acting, behaving, and speaking in that way? Well, I mean, let's go back to the... the I mean, the famous wood wood uh, wood shop teacher. Who oh, the boobs wore, as well. I, I mean, I don't. I, I I still can't work out whether that was trolling or not. Trolling. <laughs> uh, I mean, was was it him just going right? Okay, I'll, I'll, let's see how I get away with it because that's what's going to start happening. Is you know, uh, you know, and in and in in bathrooms, I've seen people sort of begin to, you know, men begin to use them. And say things like, you know, when challenge saying, "Well, I identify as a, identify as a woman." You know, what you you can't challenge me on this. Mm. So it's self ID is uh, that's another thing entirely. Which, you know, people seem to think that we live in a world where, where no nefarious criminal men might look at that and go, mm, mm. "Now that's quite a good loophole." Because all I have to do, okay. So that I'm not saying all trans people are. No, of men. course. I'm saying criminal men will use this for greater access or just to be in a changing room, you know, with whilst 13-year-old girls. Are th I mean, girls are already going through hell at um, colleges all over America. They won't use the bathroom. They're suffering from period pains. They're getting dehydrated because they will not use the bathrooms. They go home, you know, I, I, they, and they're, they're taking the um, – the emodium um, mm. Mm. Uh, left right and center that and they're doing all the, you i remember uh, you know having my sister and my cousins of how difficult it was as a teenage boy let alone a mm. teenage girl you know i mean have we forgotten have we forgotten that you know th this is the, the teen years are the most turbulent emotionally disturbing where everything is you know on a grand scale your first love your first this your first that have we forgotten all that? And do we now just think, you know, well, you know, they're just girls. So, you know, shut up and sit down. Artemis would like to join your sorority. Are yeah. you saying that the emodium and stuff, because they don't want to go to the bathrooms because there's now boys in them? Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. But, and, and, you know, and obviously, you know, they, they have the, that added difficulty and the added uh, thing of having periods. You know, young girls with uh, with a period, it's a very sensitive time. It's a very, it's a time where they need privacy. You need privacy and dignity. Mm. And I think we've stripped that away from women and we've stripped it away from girls and we have given them no option, no say, you know, for your daughter to go to school and, and for it to start. I mean, it's a huge deal. And I think we are just, we've forgotten or some people just simply don't care. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think that's a, re I think it's just, I think it's awful. I think, yeah. And then people say, with regards to what you were saying about letting potential criminals go into the bathrooms, I think the response is often, well, just a bit of red tape isn't going to stop a criminal who wants to. But that's not why we make law. Let's not make any law then. Let's no. not make any rule because everyone's going to break them anyway. It's a useless, it's a ridiculous argument. It, it, I mean, it, it's an utterly ridiculous argument because we're not just talking about bathrooms. We know we're talking about, you know, places, you know, behind, tucked behind a Sainsbury's car park. And then we're not talking about things where everyone wanders in. Oh, I have a gender neutral toilet in your home. Oh, do you? Well, let me know when I can, you know, uh, you know, what times are open because I'll come and use it tomorrow. When you're you in know, it. You, when you're in it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's it's the most yet people still make this argument you know you know it's a it's about respect it's about respecting women's boundaries yeah and women are saying look we fought for these rights we fought for all this we fought look how long it took women to get football teams sorted look how long it, it took them to be allowed to do all these things the of, of achieving equality and now there's a group that comes in and says Trans rights are human rights, which I completely believe they are. But tell me which rights you don't have. And do you actually believe that trans rights are human rights means that your rights get to impinge on another group's rights? Mm. Because that's not how it works. <laughs> you can't bully your way into. So, and people saying it's just like the fight for gay rights. Nonsense. Nonsense. We made no demands apart from treat us, don't hate us, mm. don't call us AIDS-infested faggots in the newspaper every day, mm. don't kick our heads in. 
don't make us have to go to clubs and, you know, signal to each other with handkerchiefs just so we can communicate. There's a big difference in what we fought for and what is go has been going on since 2014. Dignity as well is such a it's something you've said a few times, and it's great because I've spoken about this so many times with so many people, and it's great that there's there are so many different angles and ways of looking at things. And I think people often speak about the safety factor with with women's bathrooms, girls' bathrooms, which is vitally important. Yes. But dignity, yeah, when you're going through very difficult things and things, sometimes you just don't. Want, I don't want if I'm in a sort of situation. And I, I just, nowhere near as bad for me as a sort of bloke. You know, I don't care. I'm not that sensitive or anything like that. But if I were to be seen by a, a doctor or nurse or something like that, I prefer it to be a man because it's a dignity thing. It's like you've got the same bits as me. Absolutely. I mean, if you were at school, let's go back to your school days, you being 13, let's mm. say. Let's just say um, you, you you were fine with, you know, other 13-year-old boys getting changed to yeah. go swimming or, or have a shower or something. Now, you imagine – You've got girls in oh, there. Oh, no way. How would you have, I mean, this is, and we're talking now the other way around. Yeah. How would you uh, felt about your body, you know, age Terrible. 30? To, right. I did anyway, uh, and it would have been awful, even worse. Exactly. Me too. You know, mm. it was, it was, you know, in the corner time. Now yeah. imagine, yeah. now swap that around and imagine what it's like for a girl. You know, some girls have trouble getting changed in front of other girls because mm. they might be a bit plumper they might be a bit skinnier they mm. might be you know not the ideal shape you know we all have issues yeah. but i, I think get funny in front of other men even yeah. i get yeah, the, the the david lloyd or whatever you know people are uh, some people are just very comfortable standing that like, in front of my face with the willy out i know and i get a bit in the corner don't uh, want anyone. i know and you're a bit like sort of i can't can you just put something on and then we'll talk? I mean, I'm the same way, you know. I think they're showing off about their comfort. I think, I think, I think but they do it, don't they? They do it as they're blowing their hair and, yes. you know, and it's yes. woggling and you think, I don't, yeah. I don't need to see it. Yeah. But if you, if you actually look, if you actually go back to, you know, if you're on a tube <laughs> and it, it's, you know, and, t and a straight couple start Frenching in front yeah. of you, I get as equally annoyed. I think, can you just wait until yeah. you get off? Because I don't need to hear it. Yeah, and some of us aren't getting it that much, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> so fuck off. You know, but we used to understand this. We yeah. used to sort of, it's <laughs> fine on a Friday night. We've had a bit too much to drink. Yeah, okay. But I, I've just noticed, you know, that it's a, it's a, it's a sort of taunting thing now. It's mm -hmm. because I can, I will, uh, and you think just just rein it in a bit. Re just rein it in a bit. Let's yeah. get back to sort of behaving with a bit of respect for one another and a bit of dignity because it's missing. Yeah. Or or don't be like that and let us criticize it without us then being labeled as some sort of bigot. You know, people can do things we don't like and we can criticize it. Absolutely. And 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 you know, if that doesn't turn you into a far right <laughs> Nazi people uh what you know, it's like, I mean it's become ridiculous now and it's also it's totally denigrated the real meaning of the word transphobia. You know, if you know if a trans uh, sexual gets bashed in the street and call horrible names mm. that's that's just disgusting and it's horrible and that is transphobia that's mm. part of being transphobia being called a, a tranny or something like mm. that it's horrible and nasty and that trans child was killed recently was it a few months ago yeah it? yeah yeah but that but but apparently um they found out it wasn't to do right. with uh, to do with um the trans the trans uh, situation but that's neither here nor there mm. you know someone's dead and it's, Horrible. and it's awful. Mm. But this is, you know, you use the word too much over nothing. You totally denigrate the meaning of the word. It's a, you know, it's it's the cried wolf situation. You know, I mean, eventually you've heard it enough times. People just go, oh yeah, well, mm, yeah, well, that that happened, and it desensitizes everyone to uh, uh, to the real. Mm -hmm. homophobia and the real phobias of the world because it's a very easy word to use and all it most of it is designed just to make you go thoughts and i won yeah oh, sorry god no no i just it's designed for you to go Shush. be quiet you, you know because there's nothing you can come back if i say you're a racist Shush. what can you come back with no i'm not well well you are Thought terminating, <laughs> yes, it's thought terminating thought term cliches. It's exactly yeah, what it is. Cults. What? So what happened? Tell me to, to, to this, your the story of, of of you a few years ago. Yeah. Was it about? Was it related to J.K. Rowling? Oh, Rowling, Rowling talking about the audio thing. Yeah. What happened? And then what happened? To, what was the reaction to you in the industry, <laughs> acting industry? Okay. 
I'll make this very brief. Mm. Basically, I was doing playing the master for Big Finish Audio, which is a Doctor Who audio company. And it seemed to be going absolutely fine. And, uh, you know, they were seemed to be very happy with what I was doing. And then when I got sent the CDs, I noticed my um, name. Uh, no, no, sorry. Let me just first add that I got contacted by Graham Linhan. Okay. Who asked me to sign uh, a, a, a letter condemning the daily uh, abuse that J.K. Rowling gets. Now, I looked online. I wasn't really aware of what was going on. And I thought, God, that's terrible. I said, of course I'll sign, thinking they'd have so many signatures because it's a normal thing. You condemn, uh, you know. And then he asked me to sign a thing about Stonewall, who said no debate. And I said, no, we should have debate. That's that's what it's all about. We should just talk and talk and talk. So I signed that, thinking, no, it's great, because everyone will sign it. No. So, so suddenly I wake up one day. They started erasing my name and my face off the CDs. And then they did this last one called Masterful, where they included all the masters, and they'd left me off completely. So it was like they'd totally erased me. So eventually I got my agent to call them and say, Look, I know there's something going on. Just tell them to, to fess up to it now. Well, you know, we think he's being a bit transphobic and because uh, he supported Jacob Brown. And I sent them a tweet and I said, oh, for goodness sake, come on. I'm defending myself online because I'm getting called a transphobe every day by people that listen to your show. Can you at least have my back or something? Next day, statement. We hear it, big finish are uh, a inclusive and diverse company, hmm. and we do not endorse transphobia in any way. So basically saying, he's a transphobe, we've sacked him. So, so of course, you know, the, the lie goes around the world whilst the truth is still doing its boots up. And I, uh, you know, to this day, keep saying, you'd say I'm a transphobe? Bind, I don't lock my Twitter. None of my art, none of the articles and interviews I've ever done. Find me one thing. And then I always remember to myself, oh, yeah, J.K. Rowling says exactly the same. Yeah. Find it, and it doesn't exist. But she's already tarred with the brush. We're all tarred with the brush. Because any dissension in any way, shape, or form, or any questioning of this new thing is, is a form of transphobia. You'll see, you'll see it, you know, when... Some transsexuals um, who have um, – what's the name of the uh, a guy in America? The um, Caitlin Jenner. Kate, Caitlin Jenner mm. got attacked as a transfer. Martina Navratilova. Martina, who came out in 1981. <laughs> I mean, astonishing, astonishing. She's now called a transphobe, a homophobe, a lesbophobe, a b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-b-
and then poor Graham, he always he still thinks you know he's the one that you know is responsible for it. He's not because I would have woken up pretty darn quickly as to what's going on once I looked around on social media. So it's not him hmm. at all. But he alerted me to to what was actually happening. But I thought for a while, I thought I you know especially after the first TRA attack, which was relentless and went on for about forty eight hours. Um. Uh, yeah, it was deeply horrible, deeply, you know. And Andrew Doyle, I believe, said something <clears throat> like when he was still a comic, that he would go into a room and the pe people would sort of part, slowly move away from him or have conversations. And he noticed it quite a lot. And that hurts, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've got a lot of my friends, you know, you know, my colleagues who are really you know, nice to my face, but I always think to myself, yeah, but where were you? You know, but I get secret messages, so that sort of mm. that does, and I can't blame people mm. who work in the industry because they've seen what happens. Yeah, yeah, I've had a few of those as well. Some of the sort of famousy people, and they'll message, and they, they you know they say, "I'm really sorry, I can't. I've got my kids to feed." I know, and I I understand that. I know. I, I think yeah, and, and you think of Andrew Doyle, and Andrew Doyle's you know now he's this big name, he's got his own show and all of these things. But a few years ago, that wasn't the case, and it would have been horrible to go into this room and people move away. 